we've derived in uh, the previous, the first part of this video, how to um, how to analyze or how to cast the um, how to cast the first law of thermodynamics, so that we could analyze the processes happening or the cycle happening in an internal combustion engine, without analyzing each process independently, and as a result, uh, or as an added bonus, if you say, if you will, uh, also how to analyze um, also real actual processes, heat loss, uh, finite time combustion, and so on. So let's just review here for a second. So we have, oh, let me do a proper, let me draw a nice PV diagram. There we go. Like this. Okay, nice straight lines. So we have our pair pressure, and this is our volume axis. Um, so what we did in that video is we took our real-ish uh, looking PV diagram, whoa, something like this, like that. Let's just forget about this little tail. Um, so something like this. And then we said, okay, we're, we're going to analyze only the portion where it's a closed system. So we'll start from this point and we're going to end, I'm going to assume that the, uh, I'm going to assume that the intake valve closes right at bottom dead center and as top dead center. And I'm going to assume that the exhaust valve will open exactly at bottom dead center as well. And I'm only going to analyze what happens in between those two events. When the system, so I'm picking those because the system is specifically a closed system. So we have, so at any point here, I drew a box like this. And then at any point here, zoop, I would draw our uh, piston cylinder assembly. And then I sort of glossed over this step before, but then I identify my system. I wanna be really careful about drawing it now. Um, yep, uh, you'll see why. So now I have, I'm drawing my system. This is my system, it's a simple fluid. And then we could draw the first, we could write the first law and we said delta U is equal to the amount of heat coming in minus the work coming out. And that version that is the first law specifically for a closed system. Okay, and that is going to allow us to look at, for example, the, the effect of um, combustion ignition timing, right? Whenever we, whenever the spark goes off or whenever the injection of fluid starts uh, for the diesel, then we can look at the effect on the amount of power that's developed, but it completely overshadows the timing of the valves. We can't study those because we're, we're stuck. We're only looking at a closed system. Okay, so what if instead of um, looking at that Portion. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to erase those portions here, and I'm going to erase this point there like that. So now, what if we go back and we're actually going to consider the full open uh, system? So at this point here, I'm going to put an X. This is my exhaust valve opens, and then the piston is still moving. The pressure drops even faster because there's mass flowing out. Um, and then we have, we're going in, through, and then the, when I get here, roughly the intake valve is going to open, then the exhaust valve is going to close. And if that looks bizarre to you, we call that valve overlap. And then we're going to come back and then some point usually is like right around here, we're gonna have intake valve closed. So if I pick any point along that bottom portion of the, along that bottom portion of the of the system or of the path. Here, I'm gonna pick this one and then I come and draw my system. Well, now I have an open system. There's my piston cylinder assembly. Here's the crank arm. And this is my system. And in this particular case, the exhaust valve is open, but the intake valve is closed. So the exhaust valve is open like this. So there's actually a hole and there's mass coming out. M dot exhaust, like this. So now I need to write the first law for an open system. Here, I'm going to, I'm just gonna erase my closed system, just so I have all the room in the world to work. And we're going, I'm just, I'm just reopening my notes there. My cheat sheet um, came off, uh, turned off. Okay, so now I have an open system. Well, I'm gonna write the first law 
for this open system. I'm just cleaning up my workspace here. I'm going to, going to keep the note. This is a closed system. This is in topic B31. You will find that development. Okay. So now let's write the first law for an open system. So first law for an open system, we usually write it as a rate. DE DT is equal to uh, the rate at which heat is coming in, Q dot in, minus the rate at which uh, the work, work is being done by the control volume. And in this particular case, this is going to be boundary work. So that's actually the work from the changing of uh, size of the of the system, which is actually it's exactly it's the work that's going out into the piston, and then we have plus, and we usually separate these, so we have the sum over all the inlet of m dot h over the inlet minus the sum over all the outlet of m dot out h out, where h is now the enthalpy. Per unit mass. All right, so I'm going to disregard for our model, I'm going to disregard all of the uh, turbulence and the, the, the potential energy and, and kinetic energy that could be stored in turbulence. So I'm going to take that out. So I'm just going to equate. So E, the total energy is pretty much U, the internal energy. That is, we neglect kinetic energy, potential energy. So potential energy is pretty much zero, but kinetic energy is non-zero right? because there's um, there's a bunch of, uh, there's a lot of turbulence acting in there and so on. So we neglect all of these. So now we have du dt is equal to the rate of heat flow in minus, and now the work done by the CV. This is going to be some element of work done by the control volume over some element of time. I'm just, um, I'm just sort of bloop, taking out the two pieces of my differential, my derivative, plus, and then I'm going to I'm going to use the the I'm going to combine those two terms here, and I'm just going to say uh, because there's there's only one inlet and, and well there could be several valves, but usually most times all the valves have uh, open together, um, so that there's uh, there's normally only one inlet term and one outlet term. So I'll just say that m dot greater than zero coming in so entering the control volume and m dot is less than zero exiting the control volume and then i can just lump all of these into one term so if there's an if there's an intake valve that opens and i'm going to get a positive m dot coming into the system with carrying its own enthalpy and if the an exhaust valve opens, and I'm going to get a certain m dot exiting the system, uh, carry on carrying enthalpy with it. All right. So now we want to do aha. So here, now this is a rate. So in here, there's we have to be careful when we did the um, when we did the the the, the closed system uh, analysis. We saw that big U was equal to the mass of the system times the internal, the specific internal energy. And we, we yanked out the mass because the mass is constant, except in this case, the mass is not constant. So we have to be a little bit careful about this. We can't just, you know, uh, as we please, uh, lump mass inside the derivative, outside the derivative, because mass changes with time whenever the valves open. And we want this analysis to be applicable um, well, I want this analysis to be applicable all the way through, even when the valves are open or closed. Okay, so for an ideal gas, so for an ideal gas with constant CP and CV, um, well, we know that the, the delta U is going to be the change of MCVT, and it's actually we are, we are, uh, it is general enough. So this is true, but it's general enough. Oh, and O U G H enough to say that U is equal to the mass times CV times T. 
you can't, there's a slight, you know, there's a little, there's a subtle uh, distinction between those two statements, but it's general enough to say this and that the energy is zero when the temperature is zero. And, um, and then uh, remember that, so it's, it's general uh, enough to say this, period. So recall, this is still the same CP CV trick. So recall that for an ideal gas, CP minus CV is equal to R divided by CV in this case on both sides, because I, I have a CV in this equation that I want to get rid of, and I'll find CP over CV that's equal to K minus one. So I can write CV is equal to R over K minus one. So U is equal to MCVT is also equal to MRT over K minus one. And MRT, you remember that from, or you probably recognize that from the ideal gas law, PV is equal to MRT. So this is just pressure times volume over K minus one. And now this is awesome. I've eliminated mass from this energy term. I didn't want to have to deal with getting mass in and out and taking dm, dt, and so on. But for an ideal gas with constant CP and CV, I can get rid of it like that. So this du, dt term is equal to k minus 1. That's a constant. So 1 over k minus 1. And then I'm taking the derivative of a product. So I'm going to have two derivative term. I'll have p, d, v, d, t plus v, d, p, d, t. And that's equal to the rate at which heat is coming in minus. Now, an element of work done by the control volume is PDV because it's a, it's a simple fluid. We can only interact with it through uh, mechanical boundary work. So it's PDV, change in volume. And I've got a T at the a DT on, underneath. This is DV DT. So the, the work is PDV. And the power, the rate at which work is being done by this control volume deforming is it's instantaneous pressure multiplied by the rate at which the volume is itself deforming plus the sum of mass flow rate through the inlet and outlets hi okay well now this this should probably start to ring a bell this is starting to look very very similar to um uh to what we had before here i'm just looking for the eraser um so that is my first law. We're going to massage it a little bit more. That's my first law. And then you might recall, so whenever I have the first law for an open system, I always have to accompany it with the mass balance because the, for a closed system, the only thing that can cross the boundary is energy. So I only have to keep track of energy. The mass is constant inside the system. It's, it's just a number, three, pi, whatever you want, uh, whatever it is. But here, the mass could change with time. And this happens, right? When, when mass is going in and leaving. So I want to keep track of the mass. So I have the first law. Here, I'm just going to make some room. So with this first law that tracks energy, with my energy balance, I need to track the rate at which mass is entering and leaving the system. And I know that the m dt for my system is going to be equal to the sum of the mass flow rates going in this is a sigma going in and out of the system that's it um okay we're going to do the same trick as we did for well not the same trick but we're going to do the same change of variable that we did for uh, the closed system in that we don't really want to keep track of time time is not that important angle is what is important so I'm going to rewrite this dm dt. This is dm d theta, how mass changes as the crank angle is moving. d theta dt, this is the uh, change of variable, is equal to the sum of m dot i. There's no derivative there, so that's the same thing. So at a given instant in time, the mass flow rate is going to be a number. Well, that corresponds to a certain angle theta. At that angle theta, uh, the mass flow rate will be x. And so I can, but this d theta dt now is omega. So I can write dm d theta is equal to the sum of all the m dot i over omega, which is related to n. So we could also write it the sum of m dot i over 2 pi n, where now I have to make sure to match my time units, right? If I set n in 
revolutions per minute, then I better set my mass flow rates in kilograms per minute, right? I want my time units to match. Usually my M dots are gonna be calculated in kilograms per second. So I wanna put on the bottom, I wanna divide by 60 to have revolutions per second. It's a minor detail, but it's you, where the errors occur when we solve these problems uh, with the computer. Okay, so here I'll even, uh, can you erase this bit here just so I can get my DMD theta very close. And I'm gonna box that in. This is my mass balance. Okay, let's uh, let me get some room. We're gonna erase a couple more things. And now we're going to go back to our energy balance and we're gonna start rewriting term. I'm gonna keep this DP DT on the left-hand side because that's pressure is actually what I'm after uh, here. It's what it's the, the, the value that I actually want to calculate. So DP DT is going to be equal to, I'm gonna have a K minus one Q dot N minus, I'm gonna have a K minus one PDV DT plus a K, oh, K minus one sum of M dot I H I. Let me just make sure I have everything. So K minus one Q dot in K minus one P D V D T a K minus one. Uh, and then I have a P D V D T that I want to transfer to the other side. So I have a minus P D V D T. And then I want to divide everything by volume. So divided by big V divide by V divide by V and P over V. There we go. And then we can do a couple combinations. So let's see. Um, I have a DP DT is equal to my first term stays the same. This is K minus one Q dot in over V minus, and now I'm going to combine terms two and four. I'm going to have a gamma minus one P over V DV DT. And here I have a one P over V DVDT. So gamma minus one plus one is gamma. So I have a minus gamma P over V DV DT. And then I have the uh, mass flow term. So plus K minus one over V summation of M dot I H I. Okay, a little bit more room. Actually I'll erase everything left because we only have one transformation to do. And then we are ready to write our full system. Almost there, there we go, okay. So again, now we want to get rid of time and want to put angle as an independent variable. So change of variable, dp d theta d theta dt is equal to k minus one over v q dot in minus gamma, ah, I slipped. K P over V DV D theta D theta DT plus K minus one over V summation of M dot I H I. Um, D theta DT is Omega. That's my rotational speed. So I'm going to divide by Omega throughout. I'm going to have a DP D theta is equal to K minus one over 2 pi n v, 2 pi n is my omega, q dot in minus, well, d theta dt, d theta dt, this is k p over v, v prime of theta. These are two known functions of theta plus k minus one over v of theta. It's a known function, summation of m dot i h i over 2 pi n. And that's it. Now this is my first law rewritten to be a differential equation that gives me the change in pressure as theta changes. So let me write the other two equations that go along with this. I have to track the amount of mass in the system, m dot i over two pi n. And then I want to compute the work. I don't have to, I could do it afterwards, but it's neat to compute it at the same time. The work done, dw d theta is equal to one little bit of work is P dV 
d theta, which is v prime. That hasn't changed. So p v prime of theta. That's the work done by the system onto the piston. There we go. And now we have to solve. Now we have to solve those three, uh, those three equations. That's right. Now we want to solve those three equations where a theta is equal to minus pi, uh, P is equal to P1, mass is equal to something. We'll have to figure this out. So the mass is to be equal to some initial amount of mass and the work is equal to zero. And now we're going to integrate from minus pi until, so we're going from minus pi to zero to plus pi. And then we have to keep going to, let's see, minus pi, zero, plus pi. And now I add another pi to two pi to three pi over two. Because we want to do two revolutions for a four stroke engine. And now we just have to define just, this is where all of the, the fun comes in. Now we have to define our uh, models. Q dot in is going to take in models for heat loss, combustion, our M dot models. These are gonna take the uh, intake and exhaust flow models. And we'll learn how to generate those in further videos.